Hello everyone. Um, today we're focusing on Cambridge IGCSE Mathematics, topic of number, subtopic, factors and multiples, lesson number three. All right, so um, you might have a lot of questions on this one. What are factors and multiples? What's the difference between a factor and a multiple? And maybe what are factor pairs or how do you find factors and multiples? So that's all what we're going to look at in this lesson today. So to start off, we're going to look at order of operations. One of the most important things that you need in mathematics, basically, how do you know which order do you carry out your operations in? OK, is addition first, is subtraction first? Well, to help us, we have a, so, a sort of small rememberal method using um, the word bidmus. So this basically is the order in which you have to carry out your operations. So B for bracket, I for indices, D for division, M for multiplication, A for addition, and S for subtraction. So that is the order that you have to follow. So for example, when a phrase like this is given, 10 times 9 plus 81 take away 25. Now, since B comes first, brackets go first. So 9 plus 81 is what you have to calculate first in that so therefore, that brings it down to 10 times 90, take away 25. From there, we're looking at, okay, are we multiplying or are we subtracting? Well, multiplication comes in front of subtraction. So because of that, we are going to go for multiplication. And that means 10 times 90 is 900, after which you then do your subtraction, which leads us to 875. So this is the basic concept of order of operations, and it's quite important for all our students. So moving to the more important thing for today's class, which is factors and multiples. So um, generally, most of the numbers that we have can be broken down and written as a product of prime numbers. Now, in our first lesson, we looked at what a prime number is, and a prime number is basically a number that is multiplied by one and the number itself. So we're going to use that number here um, to break down a number like 36, right? So we want to break down 36 as far as possible so that we can write it as a multiplication of prime numbers. So we are very familiar with the common prime numbers, which is basically 2, 3, 5, and 7. These are the common ones that we use often. So we'll first of all try dividing 36 by 2. Right. So that's why we've written it in this box method. So first we're dividing 36 by 2. The answer comes to 18, which we're again going to divide by 2 so that my answer comes to 9. 9 is not divisible by 2. So you try to go for the next um, decent alternative, which in this case is 3. So we then go into divide by 3 and then the final answer therefore comes to 1. So basically, we can write that 36 is 2 times 2 times 3 times 3, right? And then, of course, using our squared powers, you can simplify this to 2 times 2 is 2 squared and 3 times 3 is 3 squared, right? So that is basically how you break down any number as a product of its prime factors. Moving to the next question, so we're going to look at how do you calculate the highest common factor between any two numbers. So for example, if I want to find out um, the highest common factor, also known as HCF in abbreviated form, between the numbers 12 and 16, the first thing I need to know is to write down the factors. So how do I write down factors? Well, basically, you have to write down all the possible things that you can multiply to get 12. So if I start listing down, um, you will see that I will get the same list, right? So 1 times 12 is 12. Therefore, 1 and 12 are factors of 12. 2 times 6 also gives me 12. And similarly, 3 times 4 also gives me 12. So basically, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 12 are all going to be factors of 12. Mm -hmm. Similarly, if I take 16, I know that 1 times 16 is 16, 2 times 8 is 16, and 4 times 4 is also 16. So therefore, I can take 1, 2, 4, 8 and 16 as my factors of 16. 
And when you compare the two, you can see that the highest factor, so although one is also there in both, two is also there in both, the highest factor here is four. And therefore, we can say that the highest common factor of 12 and 16 is four. The next one is basically finding the highest common factor of 36 and 48. Now you can use actually the product of prime factors. So if you break down um, with the numbers given to you without breaking down into the factors, if you break it down using the prime factors, you can use that as a way to calculate the highest common factor too. So you can see 36, we already found out was two times two times three times three. Similarly, if you had broken down 48, you would see that that is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. So therefore, the highest common factor of 36 and 48 you can take is the common number. So you can see that's 2 times 2 um, times 3, which is basically 12. So 12 is actually the highest common factor here. Moving on we can then find out the lowest common multiple. The lowest common multiple is actually the smallest integer that can divide both of the numbers that is given, right? So it is basically, it will be able to divide this. Um, the two numbers will be able to divide this perfectly, okay? So if we want to find out the lowest common multiple of 6 and 10, the first thing you do is list down the multiples. So the multiples of 6, the first few at least, are 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36. This is the 6 times table, right? Same way, the multiples of 10 would be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and so on. And just by looking at these two lists, you can see that 30 is the lowest common multiple for both of them. So therefore, 30 is the LCM, the abbreviation, right? If you want to use, again, the... Um, prime factor method to find the LCM, we can do that too. So you can see um, how we can break down two numbers using prime factor. So actually, um, what we did with the 36 was just doing it for one number. Here, they're doing it for both 12 and 18 parallelly, right? So they are dividing it first by 2 to get 6 and 9, and then again by 2 to get 3 and 9, and again by 3 to get 1 and 3. And you can see it. So that means 2 times 2 times 3 times 3, all four of those numbers are actually um, part of the LCM here. And that is the LCM will be 36. All right. So let's try a few questions now. So find the lowest common multiple of 18 and 21. So um, we can simply do... Uh, factor decomposition for this one so 18 you can start by dividing it by 2 that's going to give you 9 divide that by 3 so that's going to give us 3 divide that by 3 again that's going to give us 1 so basically that's the breakdown of eight, um, 18 Similarly, I can do it for 21. If I'm breaking down for 21, it's 21 divided by 3 is 7. And basically, you can't do anything further there. So 7 is the one. So what is the lowest common multiple then? That is 2 times 3 times 3 times 3 um, times 7. Sorry. So the lowest common multiple would be 2 times 3 times 3 times 7. So the answer here is 126, and that's option number 4. Okay, and the next one, a number is written as a product of its prime factors, 2 cubed, which is basically 8, into 3 squared, which is 9, into 5, so 8 times 9 is 72, 72 times 5 is 360, so 360 is the answer here. Write down a multiple between a multiple of 9 between 110 and 120. Okay, so simply what we can do is we can look at the options given to us and we can divide these by 9 to see which one gives us a perfect answer. So in this case, 120 divided by 9 won't. Neither will 111 divided by 9. 
So 117, when we divide that by 9, is 13, right? So that's going to be the one we're going to go for, 117. And find the lowest common multiple of 6x squared and 2xy. Okay, so, um, well, we can see that both of them have a common, what are we going to say? Okay, so basically 6 has to be there, right? Otherwise, we can't divide. And we need to have an x squared and we need to have a y. So, therefore, the common multiple would be option number one. And that brings us to the end of lesson number three. Hope you guys are really catching on. And uh, don't forget to tune in for the next lesson.